So hello guys, welcome back to my channel and finally I am officially gonna review a Honda for the first time on my channel. I already did uh, review a 2019 Honda City VX Plus Mavi before from an owner, shout out to Osh and Grayson. So I'm actually very excited on how this new 2022 model will perform. So I wanna thank uh, Miss Chuck Cabales and Honda Cars Pasig for allowing me to review the all new Honda City. And first impressions immediately. I do like the new look of this uh, Honda City GN. This is the model name by the way. Against the GM6, I love both models. They look unique in their own way. These are not on by the way, but look how much they reflect under the sun. Like that's actually beautiful. And then you have a new black grill as well. Gloss black. I don't mind it being dirty because it's on the outside of the car anyway. We have an RS logo here. This usually means rally spec, but they went to road sailing for some reason. And this competes with the MG5, Toyota Vios, GRS if you want, Nissan Almera and Hyundai Accent. I will only compare the Nissan Almera for now because one, it's, I drove a top of the line version. Number two, they're both CVTs. I will not compare the Accent because what I drove is a manual and the Vios an MG5, I will not compare those yet because I haven't driven those yet. But stay tuned for an MG5 review though. You have on all LED lights as I said. Even your DRLs, even your fog lamps under here are LED. So a little bit of fakery but it's just one that's fine. And then you have a carbon fiber style chin here. I'm not sure if this is real or not but it actually gives it a good look. Ground clearance by the way is 134 millimeters, just one millimeter less than the Nissan Almera. And from the previous generation, this is 53 millimeters wider, 113 millimeters longer, and 10 millimeters shorter in height, surprisingly. And unlike the GM6 model now, the side mirrors were here on the window corner, now they're on the door. They said this improves the airflow, so it improved aerodynamics, so understand why they did it. And you have one continuous light here from the start of the headlight all the way to the back of the rear tail lights until here. Okay, I'd like the look and I love this red of course. I'm being a red fanboy. And then you still have your standard 16 inch wheels. They're the same. Then here at the back, yeah, also a new look. The rear tail lights look like, um, <coughs> oh, sorry. But I do like the design, but they're long though. They stretch all the way here. And then you have a reflector here, also nice touch. It's a bit curvy. Then you have a gloss black spoiler here. And then you have a cool RS logo here as well. And then also here in the rear, you have a diffuser. It's also kind of in the carbon fiber style-ish trim. And there's a gloss black shark screen here. So let's look at it one more time from the front. I dig the look, especially in red. So now I will show you the interior. So this is the interior of the all new 2022 Honda City RS. Also when you touch the brake, this illuminates. I hope you can see it there. It's blinking. Ah, it blinks because I already have the key in here. Right. Then when I press the brake, it will just illuminate. Ah no! I like the interior massively improved from before. Yeah, it's still your usual plastics here and there. I don't mind it. There's a gloss black trim now here on the dashboard. And then, oh, there's soft leather at least here with red stitching. So that's nice to start from here, the passenger side. Glove box. Okay, that's big. Yeah, it's that tall and it's wide enough. Although it, it's a bit low, the opening. I do like this red analog gauges with the red lighting around it and you have your digital display here in the middle. Then you have your standard window switches here and adjustments for the side mirrors over here as well. Then you have one bottle holder, cabbie space on each side of the door, it's still plastic. It's a bit small though the cabbie space but at least the bottle holder is big enough. And then here on the left side, uh, yes, I like this air conditioning vent with the silver trimming wrapped around it. Yeah, still plastic, it's fine. And then here on the left side, 
A lot of blank buttons and your electronic stability control button. And a storage compartment. That's it. Also, I just noticed right now, I like the pedals too. And then, let's go here in the steering wheel. A bit better before. The steering wheel is way thicker now. Like, there's little to no squeeze at all. It's hard and it's girthy. You have your cruise control functions here on the right. And then, buttons here for your infotainment system. Oh, wait. I noticed something. Ah, so this is how you adjust the stuff in the middle, the digital display. Oh, that's cool. Okay. No! No! Okay, why am I screaming it's 8.4 kilometers per year? That is exactly the same in Aussie's car. It never moved. Should I buy a CT? The fuel consumption is so consistent. Like when I drove that, sorry I'm a bit ranting. When I drove that last October, it never moved. 8.5 and then 8.4. Now, and this new city is still the same. Even though this is a new engine, I'll get to that. What the heck? That's it. I'm considering us on the city in the future. The thing is, GN or GM6? Hmm. Let's find out in a bit. Sorry for my rant. Let's go back here in the infotainment system. It's really responsive enough. Yes. There's now Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, finally. Although, there's a secret in the GM6, you can actually have Android Auto. That's a story for another time. But this one comes as standard. You don't have to hack anything anymore. And then, not much toys to play here. Also, I noticed something. This is cool. Your rear view camera, right? You can check the last view it displayed, like, before, before you turn the camera off. That's what I understand. Uh. So, if it is, that's really good. You, you still have smartphone mirroring, despite having Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, so that's still nice. There's a lot of options, at least. Opening screen, you can do that. Okay, you can turn it off wherever you want. Oh, you can adjust it if you want. Okay, yeah, as I said, not much toys to play here. Then, here in the middle, under the gloss black trim, you have physical buttons and knobs for your climate control. The aircon's really cold. And then, underneath here, you have two USB ports, one 12 volt socket, a cubby space here, enough for my phone, just enough. Another one below here. It's just very small only. And then, two cup holders. Uh, the thing is, you cannot put here one liter bottles or canteens because it is quite short, the opening. But at least, there is, still. And then here, your gear lever. Okay, with the silver trim, greasy material, leather here with the red stitching, wrapped in gloss black. There's the econ button here now. I remember in the GM6, it was somewhere here on the left. Oh yeah, and then you have your sport mode. Yes, there's still paddle shifters. And it's plastic. I don't mind. I cannot wait to dive this thing. And then other toys here. You have your lights here. That's pretty much it. You have your visor, mirror, hello. It's small though. Nope, they don't extend. But it's fine. It's black though, which is alright. Headlining is also good. And going back here in the center console, you have a l large cubby space here. I think just enough for a phone. Not mine though. Manual handbrake. And then two more cubby space, which are enough for my phone at least. And then center glove box. Okay. Okay, it's decent. But at least it's still leather wrapped with the red stitching. Also this new seat. I love the addition of this new seat. It's kind of like Alcantara-ish. It's not mistaken. Like, look at that. And then there's red there around it. The bolstering of this is excellent. Already so comfortable. It's a bit firm, yes, the seats, but the bolstering of it is very, very good. And something I noticed in both Honda Cities, look at that, there, there was a big floor. I don't know why, but that's something I noticed only. So with that it here in front, I'll show you the back seats. So these are the back seats of the Honda City. Okay, somewhat same setup in front, plastic here, leather there, just one window switch here, of course. I think you can just fit here bottles. Yeah, that's literally it. There's no there's no cubby space, it's just only small. That goes with either side of the door. You have a speaker setup here. And this is not my driving position yet, by the way. Okay, I'll sit here because this has not been adjusted. I mean, still, look at that. Feet room, leg room, and then headroom. Headroom, okay. Headroom just enough for me. I have about that much. But the knee room and leg room is perfect. I'm 5'4", by the way, so that's why I have this much space still. And then I noticed something immediately with the back seat. There's one seat pocket here. 
But they didn't bother putting on the other side. Bummer. Anyway, by the way, you only can get air conditioning vents here in the middle for this RS variant and the V variant, the middle variant. And still, at least there is... It's a long boy though. And then underneath, you have two 12 volt sockets. There are no USB ports, but at least there are two of them. You can just buy the adapter at least. And then transmission tunnel. Just actually just small. It's a bit wide though. Okay, yeah, gets in the way, but you can put your feet on top, you'll be fine. And it's a bit quite harder now sitting in the middle since it's a bit elevated. Oh gosh. I just have that much headroom. So smaller people or kids are advised to sit here in the middle. But I think it's just best for having two people here in the back. All those same setup with the seats. I love, I don't know why this Alcantara feels so good. And it's fabric as well. Wait, I'll just confirm in front. It's also, yep, it's also the same. Alcantara-ish up here and then fabric here. At least you have all the materials in the world you want. You have plastic, leather, Alcantara-ish, and then fabric. And then there are also two isofix anchor points on either side. And then what's cool now, you have a central armrest. Okay, it's a bit low though. And then what's odd with this uh, cup holder setup, it's one small and then one big. Okay, before I show you the boot, I was about to say it. This thing is actually for holding your child seats. That's why there are isofix as well here. But this is for holding a child seat. I, I don't know, I don't have a kid, a child, I mean. But I'm wondering why they only put one instead of two. So open up the boot. Surprisingly, unlike the GM6, this is way smaller capacity now. It's only 519 liters compared to the 536 liters of the GM6 model. But it's still one of the most spacious in its class, if not mistaken. I remember the Almera has a smaller boot, same with the other competition as well. But still, it's very spacious enough. And the other thing is, unlike the GM6, you cannot fold the back seats anymore. You, there, I know there was a latch here to fold the seats, but this one you cannot do it anymore. And then underneath here, you have a space saver donut type there. That is pretty much it. So with that it, I'll show you the engine. So this is the engine of the all new Honda City RS. Still the same. One and a half liter naturally aspirated four-cylinder engine. Same power, same torque with 120 horsepower and 145 newton meters of torque. But this is a brand new unit because the previous generation GM6 model only had a single overhead cam. And then now this is already a dual overhead camshaft. So what I know from the OHC, this improved a bit better putting its power down the road and better emissions as well as you can see. It has the Earth Dreams technology. Still VTEC kicking yo. Very excited now on how this will drive. So with that it, let's go for a drive. So driving the all new 2020 to Honda City. So okay, immediately, immediately I'm just driving it a bit. And I'm already here in the bumpy part of C5. The NVH massively improved. Like it's a bit more quiet in here now, unlike the previous GM6 model. The GM6 itself is great, but this one takes it to the next step, I would say. Yes, I'm ready beside trucks, and as you can see, beside buses, you don't hear them much that much in the cabin. Also, I noticed a bit as well, there's a bit of tire noise, but it's not as loud as like in the previous model. And we're just in eco and then D mode. Oh, okay, that picks up really well. This is the one of the trump cards of this Honda seat. It's so easy to drive and I've never thought I'd consider one but now I will because I mean it's so good just takes all my boxes and yes I'm not a fan of CVTs I already said that before but this CVT in the Honda is so good even the simulations are great and yes, I'm just changing up and down a gear. It's responsive enough. I'll know in faster paces and see how this CVT simulation will perform. Because in the previous generation, the simulations of it were really, really good. Like, you can feel it changing up and then kind of feel it like engine braking a bit even though it's a CVT. It's really good. It doesn't feel as rubbery as some of the CVTs I've driven. Compared to an Elmea, I will know in a bit. Let me let me just get out of traffic. It's just a bit traffic here. 
Okay, from a standstill, okay, didn't even hesitate. Actually, that's so responsive. Oh, it's really, actually, it's punchy, huh? Like low speed. Look at that. Okay, there's not much total delay as well. Handling is still the same-ish. I think there's a bit of slight improvement on the steering feel. There's a bit more weight to it. Okay, that's really good. And then the steady engine braking. Oh, it does. Oh, that's actually better. And also the brakes. I think also just a bit better. Just a little bit more travel, but a bit better brake feel as well. Like, yeah, still the high bite. Just a little bit more travel that I noticed compared to the GM6. Okay, driving dynamics wise, yes, this engine is still the most powerful in, in its class, but it's not the most powerful in terms of torque because the Almera trumps that because it has a turbocharged engine. But this one, I think they'll be just even because this has more power. Both cars, even the Almera, their CVTs are really good. Although I might pick this so on the CD because there's a manual mode and their paddle shifters. That's something I look always for a car. Just serious, I'm still in D mode. I've not shifted at all to sport yet. Let's try sport mode. Oh! Okay. Oh! That's not bad at all. Yep, I can confirm this new engine is a bit beefier in the mid range of the RPM. Wow, this is great. I didn't expect this at all. I mean, I was expecting it, to be honest, to be the same as the previous generation GM6 CT. But no, it's like Honda turned it up to 11. It's way better. And yet, I'm still impressed until now. I'm still shocked. Sorry, Osh. It's still doing 8.4 kilometers per liter. 8.4 8 to 8.5. That's literally the same, even though this is a brand new engine. And same driving conditions as before. I'm actually going to the same test route where I'm gonna test out its handling you can watch my review of the previous generation the link will be in the description down below so let's see what's up with this new honda city fuel consumption wise i am already doing the same driving style with before heavy footed as usual and then now there's a little bit of traffic that's why it's only doing 8.4 there's always a steep here in Circular where they have to okay it made it it just made it so ground clearance may seem small when you see the numbers but yeah it's fine it's your regular uh, subcompact sedan ground clearance actually it's not bad I'm going to over humps and bumps a lot of them and two puddles and look you don't hear much of the tire noise even though these are in eco tires I'm very impressed NVHS massively improved. I, oh no, I kind of like want one now. <laughs> yeah, there's a bit of body in but what do you expect? This is not a sport car to Honda City. Driving dynamics is already a bit better than the previous generation. But against Dalmera, I don't know, I just prefer this a little bit more for some reason. I don't know why, there's something about this Honda City I like. Maybe because of the paddle shifters, there's a manual mode in the CVT, I don't know. Although in the low end torque, yes, the Almera will pull ahead. But later on, I think in a straight line, this will eat the Almera for breakfast. But there, I really want to do a compare between the two. Because I think this is literally the Almera's biggest challenge, this Honda City. Yes, this sport mode is actually a joy to drive. If you, you want to be Max Verstappen, Fernando Alonso, Pierre Gasly, you will definitely enjoy this. And I'm just uh, driving around here in the city. No pun intended still. It's so fun to drive. And then here on a rough patch of road. Yep, NVH is way better. Not much tire noise, not much rumbling. You can hear in the cabin. I'm literally driving on the same test route where I reviewed the Honda CT VX Plus Navi and then let's try a bit more handling test. Oh, this is great. <laughs> this is so good. It's no sports car though, but you can make it act like one. <laughs> 
Oh, I love this. Okay. This Honda City kind of exceeded all of my expectations. Like, it just drives so good around the city, even though this is like your typical economy car. Although this is one of the most powerful cars in its class in terms of horsepower, it ticks all my boxes. Even for the enthusiast drivers, actually I've seen some supercar owners who actually own Honda Cities themselves. So this is a pure enthusiast driver's economy car. Ah, yes. And the hiccup button, yes. There's just slight hesitation only. I'll just turn that off. I That's what I noticed on the way here. But just leave it in sport mode. one of the best handling in this class, I must say. The simulation of the CVT is way better than before. You can feel the engine braking a bit more. I really hope there was a demo unit the manual. I want to see how that performs. But for the CVTs, for all Honda CVTs, it's perfect. This new engine, yes, even though this has the same power, torque, and displacement, actually, with the previous generation, this new engine unit, the DOHC, is way better than the single overhead cam of the previous generation. It just puts down its power up way better. So yes, I am very impressed. I actually kind of want one now. <laughs> so I want to thank Miss Chaka Bales and Honda Cars Passive for allowing me to review this all new Honda City RS. Let's for it one more time. You get 0 to 80 kph in real quick. This is so good. <laughs> so, hope you guys like and subscribe. And I will see you with more Honda reviews finally. Bye bye.